We're going to talk about 3D space in After Effects here. We're definitely going to talk about it in terms of kinetic typography. So I'm going to start a new composition. doesn't really matter what it is, but I am going to make it, let's just say 1920, 1080. That's fine. That's a standard um, resolution we are used to seeing, especially on YouTube and other displays, digital displays. I'm going to make my resolution to be full, 24 frames per second. And you know what, just for now, I'm just going to play around five seconds. Not even a big deal. Uh, the background doesn't really matter. We could change that later. And I'm going to label this, uh, I'm going to say 3D space. Because, But we are going to play with kinetic typography. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to press OK. And now I have this nice little setup here. Great. And I have my composition in my project panel. I have nothing in my layer panel. So what I want to do now, I just want to play with some type. So like I said, kinetic typography. I'm going to click on the type tool. I'm going to click inside and I'm just going to type in uh, anything I want. And I am going to use a certain amount of characters and I want to play around with uh, obviously using more than just one word. I'm going to have multiple words here. And what I can do is just to make sure that anchor points in the center, I'm going to hold down command, double click on the pan behind or the anchor tool. Now that's in the center. And I can also click on my line tool and align and align and looking good there. Great. It's in the middle. I'm happy with that. If I want to change the typeface, I can. If I want to change anything here, I can. For now, I just want to do this. Play around with that. I'm just going to hold down shift to make it a little bit bigger. Oh, hold down shift. Sorry. Drag that box out. There we go. Doesn't really matter. Just playing around. Okay, so there it is in my layer panel. As soon as I click, as soon as I press the type tool on the composition or the viewport here, uh, it shows up. Yep, yep, yep. And there we go. Now, if I drop down or twirl down that arrow, I can see what I can do here. I see all my transform options as per usual, all my ways to animate anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity. I see the text and I, you know, just a normal amount of things I could see here. And what I see in my anchor point is, you know, not much in terms of, I just have my X and my Y on my anchor point, my X and my Y axis on my position, my scale, I have my two points of if I unclick that and deselect, I could stretch it out on the X axis. And if I do the same, I could stretch this out on the Y axis here as well. I just have my uh, number of rotations, full 360 degree rotations, or just a certain amount of uh, degrees and my opacity. So really it's these first three that have X and Y axis. Now, if I want to play in 3d space, really what's going to happen is I'm going to add in a little 3d here. I'm going to click on this and it's going to add in the Z axis, which is coming towards me, but there's also a little gizmo that's going to show up and explain to me what is going on. So there it is. I have that. I select my type and here's what shows up. It shows me what's going on here. I have now this blue or this extra axis that showed up the Z axis, which now I can play around with. And what that axis is, is just coming towards you or getting further away from you. So that is the uh, Z axis on that line. Same here. I can make it a little smaller, a little bit bigger in terms of the position, come towards me, come away from me. Same with the scale. Now we can't really tell much going on because there's really not much depth, obviously. So I'm just going to reset all that. And there I am, which is totally fine. That's what initially looks like. Great. Now with that, I can now animate on these particular axes and let's see this. But however, what we do need to actually set up is our cameras so we can actually see a little bit more and understanding a little bit better with our views. So what I'm going to do on this viewport, because as soon as I clicked 3D camera, I'm going to click it off. Actually, nothing is here. As soon as I click it back on, I want it to be 3D. This area shows up and what I can do is now go to active camera and I can actually select different viewports, view, uh, sorry, points of view, realistically different cameras. But what I want to do first is I want two views. I could have four views, but I want two views. So I could have a view here and a view here and they actually work independently of each other. So if I minus out on this one, I have this one selected. Or if I have this one selected and I see these blue kind of corner pieces are there saying this is what's selected. And if that is, so if I want to zoom in, zoom out, whatever, I'm going to zoom in on this one just a little bit. And now you can see this is a custom view one. So there I am custom view one. I've made this area. I could change it to custom view two, custom view three. I could change it to back and I could change it to top and I could do a bunch of things here, which that's kind of weird, right? I can't see much right now. So I'm just going to keep it on custom view one. And now I could kind of get a better sense of the 3d space I will be creating. Great. So I have my active camera and my custom view. Now keep in mind the active camera is actually what you're going to see when you render your video. This just helps me, but my active camera will be what I render, what people will see when I make my video. Okay. 
So having said that now, let's take a better look and understand once again the scale. Once again, not much happening there, but if I change my position, that's what happens. It moves away, it moves towards, okay? Same with the uh, anchor point. If I want to move the anchor point, oh, a little fast because I'm holding down shift. Same idea. I could actually move the anchor point on these at axis as well. Now let's just do a quick animation on uh, using this new axis that we have so we could play some 3D. So I'm actually going to do something like this where I'm actually going to rotate it down and then bring it up. So let's try that out. So I'm going to click on my stopwatch here for the X rotation. Right now that's where it is. I'm going to move it and I'm going to make it so it's actually coming down. So that's going to be on the 90 degree. So it's exactly flat. And then I'm going to move up my CTI just a little bit and I'm going to make it zero. So it's kind of almost like it's just waking up. All right. There is my animation. I'm going to bring down my resolution just a little bit so that maybe the RAM preview when I press spacebar isn't as bad. Yeah, so it flows a little bit more, but the quality is not as good. But once again, that's just for this workspace. Once I actually render it out, I'm going to make sure the, um, the resolution is full and then it'll be fine. Okay. So I have that type of animation, that's pretty cool. And then I also have another type of animation I could say, let's do the Y and let's play around with the Y axis. So I'm gonna do a little stopwatch there and I'm gonna leave it exactly where it is. And I'm going to move it here and I'm gonna change that. I'm just gonna drag it maybe this way. <clears throat> and I'm gonna set it at 90 degrees as well. And let's just see what happens there. So it comes up and then it rotates like that. That goes pretty fast, obviously, but just showing you the kind of cool space, because as you see it in here, you get a better sense of what's actually happening with that camera, with this different camera view. But this is actually what you're seeing. OK, so just kind of a, a fun way to play around with that. Pretty interesting. OK, now, if I want to do an animation here with that, I can with my range selector, but I actually want to change it up. I want to show you something a little bit different. So I'm going to duplicate this command D. And it's still going to be 3D, but now what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut this one off. I'm going to click down my transform. I'm just going to reset everything, and I'm just going to get rid of these keyframes. So it's just back to normal. Okay. Now, instead of animating the whole word together, or these three words together, I'm actually going to animate and add this extra piece in here. Go to text, animate, and I'm going to enable per character 3D. See what happens with, with these boxes when I click on that. Now what I could do, I could animate each individual character in 3D space, not just the whole piece altogether. I could do both, obviously. I could still rotate this with my transform and rotate it all together and rotate it all together. OK, but now with this option, because it's enabled, I can animate. And what I want to do is I want to animate, though, using now that it's been enabled, I'm going to do, let's say, a position. I'm going to animate a position. I have my animator one. I have my range selector set up as well. And now what I can do with my position, I'm going to play with my X, Y, or Z. I'm going to play around. And now what happens is I'm going to be able to do this per character in 3D space. So let's try that out. Let's play around with that. So my start, I'm going to do a little bit of a start animation here. So I'm going to click on my start there. And this is going to be 0% and then I'm going to have 100%. And what I like to do is set that up and then I go in the middle and I'm going to change in the middle more or less what my position is going to be. So let's play around with the Y. We're going to bring down the Y all the way down here and set it up right there. Great. I'm going to bring it back. There's my keyframe. It remembers the start at 0%. So it's going to start here. Then it's going to just kind of go through. And what it does, it's just going to animate through and kind of bring it up, which is very cool. And I could kind of see what's happening here as well, how that's actually functioning. Cool. Now, what I'm also going to do, let's play around with the Z axis. Let's see if that does anything for me. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to make it much bigger. And let's see how that animates out. So it kind of comes a little bit bigger than goes a little bit smaller, which is totally fine. So really what's happening in this range selector, it took my original position as its default where it needs to be. And anything I change is going to change it and then go back to its default where I originally had my um, where everything was positioned. Everything was exactly as is. So I can play around with that. That's cool. What else can I do? Let's add in a, um, rot a rotation. So once again, I have my Z axis there. I could play around with that. Now over here, I kind of have a little bit of a better chance really seeing what's going on. 
And what I'll do is I will play around with that axis, maybe the Y rotation. All right, they all kind of move that way. I'm gonna click on 90. So now they're gonna start this way. You kind of can't tell there, but you can tell here what they're doing. They're kind of rotating obviously on themselves. So let's see what happens there. Now you can kind of tell what's happening. I could kind of drag this out a little bit more. kind of rotating and then you see it kind of come in so there's a lot you could do with this now per character which is really really nice what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna actually create another text layer just add in the opposite of no 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 here we go I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and now instead of just rotating and animating, I'm still going to make it 3D by clicking on the 3D here. Instead of just animating the start or the end or the offset, I'm actually just going to rotate and play around with animating the actual rotations. So I'm going to still enable my per character 3D so each individual character can rotate. And I'm just going to go down to my transform. Sorry, I'm going to add an animation of rotation. There are my rotation options under my animator one, under my range selector. And I'm just going to actually animate the Y rotation. So I go, oh, I click them all. My apologies. I'm going to select one Y rotation. I'm going to make it 90 degrees. So you kind of can't see it. You kind of can't see it. And then I'm just going to move it up. I'm going to give it a little bit more. And I'm going to set it back to zero. And now I have this option here. And I can see, obviously, in my active camera view and my custom view, what's actually going on. So it's starting there. And it's kind of coming in like that, which is, which is great. The next thing I could do, I could also animate my X rotation. So I'm going to say there, start it at zero. It's going to go to say 90. Then it's going to come back to say zero. Let's see that. So it starts off on animating the Y, then it animates on the X, which is pretty cool. I could obviously still do a range selector. Let's try that out over here. And let's animate. Uh, actually, I'm just going to get rid of all these. Bring it back. Let's animate, um, like I like to say, let's do an offset. I'll do a start. Sorry, I'll do a start. Well, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to do one. I'll do two characters at a time. So there, and I'll bring my end. So I have two characters highlighted. I can see because my input here and my input there. having a bit of an issue. There we go. So line that up. I'm going to click on my offset. Now what I can do, I'm going to click there and I'm going to move my CTI and I'm going to change this to a different offset right there. I'm going to make sure my initial offset was at the beginning, which it is not. So I'm going to drag this back. So both of my end and start are at the beginning. Now, if I'm going to go in the middle and now I'm going to actually change my X or Y or Z and see actually what happens. So I'm gonna, let's make this 90. Let's see what happens. So this is what's going to happen. That's all. That's just a little X rotation on the 90 degree. Let's add a Y. Let's see what happens. I'm going to bring it in the middle. Let's add a 90. Let's see what happens here. It kind of dips down. Actually, you know what? Let's get rid of that so we can actually see it all at once. I just want to see the Y. Awesome. So that's kind of fun. If I don't want to see the Y, or sorry, I don't want to do an actual particular amount of degrees, I want to see one full rotation. I can just click on my first number, add in a one. So that's one full 360 degree rotation. All right, pretty cool. And now the Z axis, like to play around with that too, it's pretty, it's, it's fine. So let me get rid of these ones. And I'm just going to add in, oh, sorry, not those ones. My apologies. I just want to get rid of this. And uh, let's just do a one rotation on the Z. And this is what this does. Just kind of flows around. Now, eh, I'm still having an, a little bit of an issue with the clunkiness of my the lag. There we go. It kind of just does a little flip on itself. That's all I really wanted to show you about the um, enable per character 3D, which we did up here. We enabled that. So now each individual character can do some type of individual animation, which is really cool, as opposed to the whole word. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to add extrusion or depth onto a vector file that we're going to bring in from Illustrator. So it's a logo I made from in Illustrator and we're going to add some depth to it, some extrusion and see how we could kind of play around and animate that. And we could actually do that in After Effects. So I'm just going to click and drag my Illustrator file and just bring it in to my project panel. 
And I'm just going to bring it in as a merged layer. That's totally fine. Now I could have also went to File, Import, and brought it in the file there. Same idea. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to click and drag and bring it into my layer panel. Now, what you may or may not have known is I've been working in Cinema 4D. Now, normally we actually by default is classic 3D, but Cinema 4D will allow me this option. But what sometimes uh, classic Cinema 4D does also, it kind of makes you, it allows you to some things you can't do. But in this situation, this is all I want to show you really is to play around with this option here. So here I have my logo and what I want to do, I want to convert it to shapes that can be extruded. So I'm just going to go to layer and create and create shapes from vector layer. I'm gonna make sure that, well, obviously, automatically, it was on continuously rasterized. That's continuously rasterized. I'm gonna click down. I'm gonna make this 3D, all right? And now I have this option. As soon as I did that, I made it 3D. I have this geometry option. Now look what I can do. I could add a bevel. I could add extrusion. So I'm definitely gonna be able to see it here in this camera view. I'm going to add some and just scrub it and kind of now I'm adding some extrusion there. Look at that. Very nice. So now here you can't really see it, but here you can. Now here's another thing we could do with our custom view one. We could actually change up the camera angle ourselves with these three tools. So I'm just going to click on the orbit camera tool and it's just going to orbit around. Now, you know what I'm going to do really quickly? I'm going to change this from full to half. So it's not going to be as good quality, but it'll go a little bit faster for me. So here I could kind of move around, move the camera around this to get a better sense. Here I could move on the X and the Y, move it around. And here I can use the Z and I could do the same thing, which would come closer to the camera. I'll go farther away from the camera. Another way to quickly cycle through these three cameras is press the C key. I can go to orbit, press C, X and Y, C, the Z. I'm going to go back to orbit to give myself a better view there. Okay, there we go. Just to show you that, that's all. So now that I actually have this, let's do a little bit of animation. I got a bit of depth there. So let's do a transform. And I still, once again, it's 3D, so I can do a uh, X rotation or X or Y rotation. So let's actually play around with that. Let's see what happens there. Yeah, let's do that one. So I'm going to click on my Y rotation, zero degrees. I'm going to move it. Let's go 90 degrees. And then let's go back to zero degrees just to play around, see what it's all about. Cool. Now, because it's extruded, because there's more going on, the the uh, RAM preview is going to be a little bit tougher, a little bit more laggy. So it's definitely easier and better to change my resolution, even though the quality is not there. Once again, when I render it, it will be fine. So that's just something pretty cool there that we can do. Another thing I want to add, just because we added some extrusion, we added some more 3D effect to it. What I can do is add a light and let's see what a light source does for us. I'm going to go to layer. I'm going to go to new and add a light. Now, a lot of options here. But what I just want to add is a point light, and that's all. I could add a few different types of light, but the point light is going to work best for us right now. I could change the intensity and color, not a big deal. I'm just going to say OK, because I could change a lot of those things right in here. When I twirl this down, light options, a lot of light options here. OK, so this is showing me where the light is here. This is showing me where the light is here. So if I click on this light, I grab my selection tool. I can move that around. And there's my light moving it around. OK. So that could actually change how it affects my actual light on my 3D area. So it's a little darker here, a little brighter here. Now the next great thing I can do, I can play around with the position and animate the position. So if I want to move it on the Y, I can bring it down a little bit. So let's bring it right about here. Let's bring our X right about here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to animate this. So I'm going to click right here on my position transformation. And I'm going to set it. I'm going to bring the X over here. And then I'm just going to do bring it over here and I'm going to bring the X back over here. Just to kind of play around with a fun little animation and we can see what's happening here as well, how it's actually working in 3D space. So once it's done rendering that other way, And it just kind of has a nice little shine of light that goes on it. It doesn't really anything really affected other than that. Now, realistically, yes, the light is actually also working on this because the light is actually a part of all of this. So it's affecting the light is actually affecting a part of this initial animation I did, which actually looks really cool. 
And then it does a little kind of glaze over the light, which actually affects that 3D, which is really, really nice. Now, if I don't want it to affect this initial trans, this initial animation, I could just move the light and say, no, only start here. So there, nothing affects, the light is not affected, it just does a nice little animation. Then the light comes in and does something like that. So there's a couple different ways we could play with that. 3D extrusion, adding the depth, playing with the light, very simply, and looking at different camera views to give us a better sense of what's going on. And hopefully that helps you out understanding more kinetic typography, different things you could do with uh, 3D uh, per character, uh, 3D just on its own, and obviously playing around with some extrusion as well.